everybody, today I'm going to take this raw file right here and I'm going to turn it into kind of something like this at the end. And I just want to share my entire process from start to finish with all of the sliders and kind of all my thoughts. But just quickly before that, this video is brought to you by Wix. Now, I'm sure you've at least heard the name Wix before. They're a website building platform and the best of all, you can start for free, not just for a limited time, but for unlimited time, you can have the basic website here for free. And if you just have a basic portfolio, that might be all you need. So go and check out the link in the video description below and start building your own website today. And you know, instead of giving people like your Facebook or whatever, just let them know that you have your own website. It makes it look a lot more professional. All right, let's get started here. First of all, I wanna bring down the highlights then bring up the shadows slightly. And as you can see, the histogram is kind of leaning towards the left. So I wanna bring up the entire exposure by a bit. And while I'm at it, I also wanna bring the whites to the right. Now bring the whites to the right will make everything super, super dynamic. And as you can see, if you go too far, it really ruins everything, especially the very bright parts. So instead, I wanna hold down the Alt key and make sure there's virtually nothing clipped, something like that. And then I can go into the blacks and bring them down just a tiny bit. So all of these really dark parts are actually dark and you know aren't super bright, which makes it very low contrast and kind of washed out. Now, the next thing is clarity, and clarity is a very big topic. Now, personally, for this picture, because you can see there's so much going on, there's leaves, there's water, there's waterfall, everything here would just be way too cluttered, way too much if I bring the clarity to the right. So by going into the minus, you can really make the mood more dreamy, more soft. And I think, you know, don't go too far, but around minus 10, maybe minus 15, works really well here. Then vibrant saturation, of course, this is a raw file, so you wanna add at least a little bit of vibrance or saturation. Saturation will just add your entire saturation very broadly, whereas vibrance will kind of check for the colors that aren't as pronounced and bring them up. Now, I'm just gonna add like a little bit of saturation and maybe three times more on the vibrance. Okay, so let's just see real quick a comparison from left to right. Already it looks a lot more boosted and just a little bit more vibrant in many ways, but the color is one big thing that is off to me. So you can see it is kind of blue and I could warm it up, but then it becomes so dull and kind of almost boring because I want the water to be cool. I want the darks and the black and shadow parts to be cool. So what I'm gonna do here is actually just bring up the color temperature by a tiny bit. So yeah, really just to 6,000. And I'm gonna go right away into the split toning, go to the highlights and click on this little box. And that will give me a color palette. Now the split toning is great because you can actually add colors and not just enhance them or increase them with saturation or vibrance. And what I wanna do here is just add some warm tones in the highlights. Now, having warm tones in the highlights usually looks better than if you go for another color because naturally speaking, the sun, lamps, whatever, most light sources are relatively warm. So I'm just gonna go for a nice in between and I like to bring up the saturation all the way to 100. So I really see the actual hue, maybe a bit more towards the magenta than the greens really in the highlights and of course bring down the saturation to a more realistic and less crazy level. Now, what I can do also is go into the shadows and go actually into the opposite. I mean, if you would wanna go into the reds or the greens, whatever, it's all up to you, but what I really wanna do here is go into the blues. So just choose the exact blue hue that I wanna go for. So I'm gonna go a little bit more into the distinct blue and I think, yeah, maybe even further to the right and just bring the saturation to maybe, maybe 20, 25. And now just looking from before the split toning to after, you might not think it is a big thing. And actually I'm gonna increase the warm tones to maybe 35 even, but you can definitely see the difference in the tonality and the differentiation. Whereas before it was overall kind of blue, now we really have some warm tones in the highlights while at the same time, in some of the darker shadows, it is more bluish and I absolutely love this look. 
Now going further up into the tonal curve, here what I think I want to do, because the picture is still yeah, just a little bit dull, so what I want to do is go into kind of the medium bright tones and just bring them up a bit and also create some contrast and really go quite far down into the tonal curve and bring that one a bit back. That's just that little bit more contrast and punch. But now what I want to do is really fine tune all of the colors. Now, of course, Lightroom, you would have sharpening and I would suggest that you add a little bit of sharpening, also hold down the Alt key and bring the masking slider to the right. So all of the areas that are, you know, don't have any texture are not going to be sharpened and also bring the color temperature to the right. Uh, but what I mean here is I don't want to go too far into this fine tuning of the details or whatever. I really just want to have a nice, good looking overall picture. So what I'm going to do real quick here is just add some vignetting, bring the feather more towards the right and really, yeah, really bring in some vignetting, not too crazy amount though, because then I can always add some more in the local adjustments and then go into the camera profile and just see if there's a profile that I like better. Sometimes it can completely change your look. Camera landscape looks pretty good, but maybe just a bit over the top. This one is too bright. Now you will only have these options if you actually shoot draw, which is definitely something I would recommend you to do because you get so much more detail, so much more flexibility to edit. And I actually really love camera vivid. So you can see sometimes just going through these profiles will change your picture in a way that you, that you really like. And I think camera standard, a dope standard. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with camera vivid. Now it does bring the shadows just a hint too much to the, to the left, meaning it crushes them a bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is bring up the shadows in contrary and maybe also bring down the vibrance from plus 30 to around plus 20. Now I'm just gonna fine tune the primary colors and primary color sliders will, okay, so if you have green, it will also adjust the hues of the reds and the blues because they're made out of some greens. In short, just play around with them. It's very hard to say what you should do here because there are so many different options and every single picture is very different. There's not really a method to go about this but I just want to make this whole bluish tone a little bit more pronounced and then also bring the reds out a bit more from the yellows, just like that. Mm, maybe go a little bit into the minus saturation because there's really a lot of greens already. And now before the camera calibration and after, it didn't do a big, completely game-changing thing, but it is definitely much, much better looking and much more fine-tuned. So what I'm going to do now is go into the local adjustments and what I want to do is grab a graduated filter for the first thing, bring up the exposure by a half of a stop and just drag that over the top part of the picture. Now, as you can see, the, the waterfall, of course, is the brightest thing in here and the foreground is kind of dark. It doesn't need so much attention. So what I want to do is really play with that and add quite a bit of exposure, not so much whites because then you can really, you know, just blow the very bright parts but instead maybe highlights, even go a little bit into the minus clarity, minus dehaze. And with that, you can add so much, so much different complexity because now the distance looks way more hazy, way more bright, and it just adds such a, such a complex mood. If I just would delete that one filter, you can see it looks dark and it works, but compared to the other one with the filter, it just looks so much more complex and I absolutely love doing that kind of thing. Then I'm right away gonna grab another graduated filter and this time it's gonna be for the foreground, but I'm gonna go into the minus exposure. And the thing here is you wanna have a soft feather because if you go very harsh, it, it doesn't look natural, it doesn't blend into the picture. So having it very, very soft here, even angling it, and then fine tuning the exact exposure, maybe even bring it more into the picture and also go a little bit into the plus shadows actually, because I just want to make it darker. I don't want to really crush any of the shadows and also bring down some of the contrast. Now, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to add a very last graduated filter and that's going to be over the top left. So here I'm just going to simply increase the, yeah, just the exposure by a little bit, bring down the highlights so all of the very bright parts in the leaves are still not clipped. 
And then, yeah, then I'm going to go into the Dutch burning. So the Dutch burning is making individual parts darker and brighter. And we already kind of did that. But here it's just a lot more options, a lot more opportunity to do so. And what I want to do is just go into the plus exposure, a little bit into plus whites and also add a tiny bit of warm tones in the color. So then I can just go over some parts, for example, all these leaves or the vegetation here, I can just right click duplicate and bring them over another part, maybe even go over these leaves in the sky in the trees. And you can see it just does a lot, I'm even going to add one over the bridge with a little bit less. And that's a great thing about these radio filters, you can very, very easily right click and duplicate them and then just adjust some of these um, adjustments according to the area that you're actually working with. Now, overall, I think a big thing is just bringing back some of that contrast, some of that darkness. And what I'm going to do here to achieve that is first of all, we're going to go back into the global adjustments and dial back on some of the shadow recovery. And then also what I want to do is just bring the contrast a little bit more towards the left. So the whole, yeah, just not as contrasty and overdone. It's really about the fine tuning at this point. And then I want to go back into the dark and burning and just add some negative exposure as well. So here again, just negative exposure instead of the plus and instead of bringing up the whites, I'm actually going to bring down the blacks. I'm going to go over here, right click and duplicate. And the very important thing, if you do a lot of dark and burning, you really like to have bright parts is to still have some dark parts, because if you don't have that, everything will look just very even, very dull, very boring. So having at least some dark parts that you can adjust with these uh, radial filters with the dark and burning really well is just, yeah, I'm just repeating myself because I want to fill the time while I'm doing all of that. But it is vitally important and a lot of people will just pay attention to the plus exposure, but not to the minus. So just going to angle it like that. And as you can see, there's all sorts of sizes and all sorts of shapes of these filters. And now I'm just going to add some more smaller ones over some of these rocks. So right click duplicate, maybe bring one over this tree trunk and over here. And I think, yeah, I think that should be almost what I want to do. Right click duplicate the last time, just go over here. So let's just add a very last one, which is over the top left kind of a bigger one, something like that. So there's also, you know, kind of almost a custom vignetting on just one corner. Okay, I almost wanted to say that I'm done. But what I want to do real quick is just add some additional clarity with the adjustment brush here, make sure the feather is at 100. And just go over some small parts of this waterfall and bring back some of the clarity you know, really not too much, just some areas. And that will add, well, I guess just clarity differentiation within some parts right here. And I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. Maybe just real quick bring, yeah, bring the color temperature a tiny bit more towards the blues, bringing down some of that overall contrast, bringing up the shadows a tiny bit more and maybe bring the blacks from minus 17 to minus 10. So I'm going to say this is all I'm going to do for this picture. Let's see in the history here if we go to the raw file. So wow, this is actually a pretty, pretty big difference. So this is the raw file and afterwards it looks completely different. Now, hmm, the thing is, if you see such a direct comparison with such a huge difference, it's very easy to think that it's completely overdone. However, if you go back to the computer after a while and look at it just as a standalone, personally, I think it looks actually really good. But of course, if that's not your editing style, I hope you could still take some tips, some, you know, techniques that I showed you and maybe go half or a quarter as much as I've done here. But yeah, that's been it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And, and yeah, let me know what you think of this picture. Do you think it's overdone? Or do you think it looks good how it is? Anyways, take care, guys. See you in the next video.